Larry King was a famous TV and radio host who unfortunately recently passed away at the age of 87. Now, I never knew much about his religious views, but recently I saw a video of his pop up in my newsfeed called The King Gets Candid about the origins of his atheistic beliefs. Now, of course, naturally, I always love hearing people's reasons that they give for what they do and don't believe, so I watched his video. And while I was listening to the reasons that he gave, it seemed like they were just begging for a response. Now, when it comes to this video, I have no desire in attacking Larry King personally, especially now that he's passed away. But instead, this video is just to respond to the ideas and the concepts that he gave for why he didn't believe in the afterlife. So let's just go ahead and discuss them and let's go through his clip together. Money Mandahar on Instagram. It's no no secret you're fascinated with the afterlife. What are your beliefs on the afterlife and what do you think happens when someone passes away? The trouble is I think nothing happens. I, uh, I have no, I don't believe in organized religion or religion. I, I, I can't make that leap of faith. Uh, I've never seen anyone return. I've never gotten a message when I had heart surgery. I didn't see clouds or white bright lights. I, I know that people say they've seen it, and I respect that, and I hope they're right. Okay. So I can hope. Hope is different from belief. All right, let's go ahead and stop there. So right off the bat to start, Larry correctly argues that belief and hope are different things, and both don't tell us whether or not something is true or not, by the way. They can only give us the reasons for why people believe that some things are true and don't believe in other things. But right off the bat, the reasons that he gave in support of why he doesn't believe in the afterlife seem problematic. He said he didn't believe in the afterlife because he didn't have any personal experience of it when he had his heart surgery or anything like that. So personal experience is at least one of the metrics that he used to come to conclusions about the afterlife. But of course, that reasoning has a few issues. First, if you haven't personally experienced racism, is that a good reason to conclude that therefore racism doesn't exist? Of course not. Just because you may not have experienced racism, it doesn't mean that you're right to conclude that racism doesn't exist. Or how about if my friend David Wood, who doesn't feel feelings of empathy, used that same logic? If he did, he'd say things like, I don't experience empathy or remorse. I guess I can conclude that empathy and remorse don't exist. And yet, some of you are stupid enough to think that empathy and remorse exist. You giant morons, you probably believe in moral realism too. So the point here is that if King used that same reasoning and applied it to other things in his life, we would find out that at least 95% of what he believed he would have had to reject. So it didn't make much sense for that to be the reason why he rejected the afterlife. But maybe he gives us some other reasons. Let's keep going. My wife is a true believer. She'll say things like, you know, her uncle died, I'll see him on the other side. And whenever I ask, where is the other side? And what form of them when you see them in? What does the spirit look like? I think it's all, so my theory is this. Okay. Man uh, came from the monkeys and gorillas. I think that's obvious. All you gotta do is look at gorillas and monkeys. All right, I hate to stop here and not to be petty, but according to the theory of evolution, humans didn't come from monkeys. The theory actually teaches that humans had a common ancestor with chimpanzees. But more importantly, I'd be willing to bet my last 20 that Larry never saw a monkey turn into a human, of course. So given his previous statement about needing personal experiences, why would he believe in the theory of evolution? Maybe in cases like this, he needs external evidence. Now, of course, there is a lot of evidence for life after death, ranging from the arguments from consciousness to near-death experiences with externally verifiable evidence in support of them, and so on. But let's just go ahead and hold off, and let's just continue to hear what he says. We evolved and walked on two feet, and then man was walking around with women, and one day he fell down. Okay. And they looked at him, and he didn't get up. He wasn't sleeping. He didn't get up, and they he didn't get up. And then he started to smell bad, you know. So they put him in the ground. You know, what else? Where are you going to put him? Put him in the ground. And then someone had to say, some smart guy had to say, this is it. I think it's all religion is based on death. If you didn't die, there'd be no religion. Wow. So what it does is, is encourage the masses 
<laughs> Karl Marx called it the opiate of the masses, which I believe it is. So as we listen to the story, we heard King start off with somewhat of a detailed story that he seemingly made up for which we don't have a single shred of evidence that such a thing happened. Now, secondly, he said that if we take away death, we would have no religion. But that seems to come from the assumption that the only reason that people hold religious beliefs is because they have some sort of fear of death. It's kind of like saying if it wasn't for sex, then people would never get or stay married. Now, it's true that sex could be one reason for why some people decide to get and maybe even stay married, but it isn't the only one. Even if the fear of death were a motivating factor for people to believe in Christianity, it obviously would still be much more than that. If the only reason to believe in Christianity were to avoid a fear of death or something like that, then you would never see another Protestant inside a church again ever. We believe that salvation is by grace through faith. So we don't earn our salvation, but instead we accept a free gift of everlasting life. So any fear of death we might have had would be gone the moment that we accepted the sacrifice of Jesus that was offered to us when we first converted. But still, we worship God, we still desire the closeness with God, we still do things to love and help others, we still read our Bibles, and so on. So of those things that I just listed, I'm sure King would probably consider those things to be part of religion, and that's what makes his view inaccurate. I don't, dis I don't think my wife is nuts, I don't think my father-in-law is nuts, I think they all firmly believe, but I think it's superstition based on this desire to want to know you're going somewhere. It makes you feel good. Yeah. And you can't be proven wrong. That's true. Because if you're dead and you go somewhere, you were right. If you don't go somewhere, you don't know it. And nobody knows. It's a win-win. That's true. I can't make the leap. <laughs> That's a long answer, but I can't make the leap. All right, lots to unpack here. So let's go ahead and start with his claim that people believe based on superstition and because it makes you feel good about death. Now, I have no doubt that this is actually probably true for a lot of people, but for me personally, this wasn't true at all. I don't know how many people think like me when it comes to this, but to my knowledge, I honestly can't remember ever being worried about having some fears of death that needed to be reconciled. I just figured if I died and that was the end of it, then it wouldn't bother me because I wouldn't be around to be bothered. That was just how I thought. All right, so now to his point about how no one knows the truth about life after death until they die, I agree with him that the atheists can't know if there's life after death until after they die, and that's because they don't believe that that information has been revealed to us. But this isn't the case for the believer. If God exists, at least in principle, it's possible that God could give someone an experience to confirm to him the afterlife. But even without one, a believer can still be convinced based off of the data from near-death experiences to the arguments surrounding the irreducible and non-local nature of consciousness, all the way to the evidence of the resurrection of Christ. Now, of course, those like King can reject the reasons, but I think that there's plenty of evidence to support the conclusion that there is actually life after death. Now, let's go ahead and hear the rest of the interview. What made you actually lose your faith? Uh, the good, very good question. I lost my faith by not getting answers to questions. I, uh, uh, every religious leader has never answered questions like, Okay, man has free will, right? What did that have to do with Katrina? If God is omnipotent, could he have prevented the monsoon? So I lost my faith uh, right at the bottom of my, my, my bar mitzvah. I started asking rabbis questions because they encouraged me to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Then I would ask questions of I, I interviewed, except for the Pope, every major religious leader, had the Russian Orthodox Church, had the Mormon, Mormon Church, um, Catholic bishops, James Pike, the Episcopal bishop, and there's one that they never have an answer, and the same answer is, we don't question the ways of the Lord, or the Lord has a plan. Do you believe that s some mystical figure up there has a plan for you, and the plan might be to blow you away in a hurricane? And then the Lord of the first of, of the Old Testament, I didn't like him at all. Okay. So if I'm supposed to love this God, I instead was taught to fear him. All right, so real quick, a brief note about the Old Testament. When the Bible talks about the fear of God, fear isn't being used in the same way that we use the word today. Instead, fear also means to respect, to stand in awe and adoration, and to honor, and so on. So it encompasses a whole lot more. But when he talked about an all-powerful God who allows bad things to happen, I've addressed this objection in length in my response to the popular YouTube atheist, Cosmic Skeptic. So go ahead and click on this video, and I'll see you over there. But the next time that you hear someone say, If you didn't die, there'd be no religion. What are you going to say? What do you mean?